Go back, go back. That's the whizzing message of World's End, a shop in London's King's Road, outside which Londoners now take their pleasure in pirate right, postures. Okay. It's part of a new King's Road mood that's half a fashion and half a way of looking at the world. Its high priestess is a former singer with another saltwater hero, Adam and the Ants, World's End manageress, Jordan. Well, I just think that in a time of sort of economical depression at this moment, um, with people like Margaret Thatcher who, who put such a great um, downer on people, that um, the inclination is for people to look rich and look healthy and look up. Vivian Westwood and Malcolm McLaren, who made all these clothes and, in fact, are responsible for starting all this um, fashion, um, they really appreciate and were very, very impressed with certain um, uh, historical minorities, such as the pirates, the Apache Indians, um, Louis XIV type figures who were in the French court. And um, they appreciated their mode of living and their style and their dress. And so what she's done is try to take part of that sort of 18th century dress and modernize it and make it for, for young to any age of people, but make it look very street wearable, very bright, very rich looking. This is a part of her new collection. It's called a jungle beachwear collection. It's the sort of thing you could imagine being worn on a sort of Caribbean beach when you're up to your uh, knees in salty water. You know, they explain that this is the hope of Britain, really. This fashion, this fashion, um, the shop, in fact, and the designs that come from it are the, um, the great British hope and uh, will influence world fashion. And even if the King's Road seems better placed to regulate the ripples than rule the waves, it's already contributed some of the liveliest chapters in Britannia's story. At one time, King Charlie's private footpath, the royal route from the centre of town to Hampton Court. It became the base from which Mary Quant knocked the world of fashion sideways in the 60s, turning King's Road shopping into a social event and bringing 8 million camera-carrying tourists to press their noses against the windows of its 250 boutiques. Two visitors who stayed to become photojournalists recording the latest King's Road phenomenon, The Poses, are Ted Bolhemus and Lynn Proctor. We bought the camera about 18 months, two years ago, and since then we've been taking photographs, first of all in clubs when we're doing a gossip column, and then expanding out. At the moment, what we really like is taking photos down the King's Road where everyone goes to promenade, display what they're wearing. It, it's this great parade. Posing is is really where it's at and you need a place to do it. You go down to the King's Road and you pose or you go out to clubs and you pose. The idea of having a camera is really central to this whole thing. People take pictures of each other taking pictures of each other and it just goes on and on. It's also about having a lot of fun that you can dress up and wear what you want to. The kids walk up and down the King's Road on a Saturday, bump into people, look at what's there look in the shops, buy clothes, but put that together with their own ideas and come up with their own fantasy and their own character they'd really love to play. It's like a fancy dress ball where you really can choose any character you want to. What they're creating is a kind of off-the-rack mythology, soured with the second-hand celebrities thrust upon them by the media. Kids are raiding the rails of theatrical costumes to drape themselves in stardom's trappings, turning their own image into an 8x10 glossy, creating a self-centred style in which each of them can be both the star and the fan, the photographed and the photographer. Go ahead. Good. OK, Jay, uh, Patty, look up. Good. 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 Right. Carry on. Good. Fine. Okay, who else have we got here? The sightseers and the sights have become a reflection of each other. Self-consciousness is now holding sway in the King's Road. Every passer-by an audience, every audience waiting its turn to enter centre stage.
The same Kings Road pubs, which in their day provided a haven for such fashionable dissenters as Oscar Wilde and Rex Whistler, are today offering rippled glimpses of 80s artistic exotics. Sidelights on them are also provided by another of their champions, clothes designer Colin McFarlane. I personally think that uh, most fashion doesn't really begin with a designer. I think it really begins with the customer. Um, generally, I think it's street fashion that causes commercial fashion to happen. Uh, the kids wear fashion and they also look for a certain type of fashion, a certain feeling, and they come to shops like this looking for it. We pick up the feeling and we kind of uh, stylize it into, into a look. And about six months to a year later, Paris then pick up on this look and do it in a very, very exotic way. And um, the funny thing is that it doesn't just end at Paris because the British buyers from the big chain stores go to Paris, copy the look, and produce it a year, year and a half, two years after we've done it in all the high streets in the country, but in a very watered down version. which is definitely the new look. Um, the funny thing about it is this was definitely not created by any fashion designer. It wasn't even created by people really with money. It came out of the east end of London, which is a fairly poor area. A lot of the people were out of work, and yet out of old clothes, things from charity shops, and things that they got down, handed down from their uh, grandmothers, uh, they created a complete new look, a sort of historical romantic look. And now um, it's the big thing in the street, and very soon it's going to be the big thing all over the world. The King's Road's very special as a shopping street because people don't just come to shop here, they don't just buy something and rush off home. People come here, buy the clothes, and they actually wear them in the street. And uh, as people say, it's the longest catwalk in the world. Uh, any Saturday afternoon, there's a continuous fashion show going on up and down the street. I think the King's Road will live forever. Street theatre, at its most wide-eyed, a constantly shifting relationship between the watchers and the watched, the posers and the passers-by. Reassurance that people can behave like window dummies, and window dummies behave like people. themselves conspicuously at a distance, the rebellious youth groups whose territory this used to be. Although the punks, the Teds and the skinheads all claim an aggressively anti-prettiness attitude, their mockery of the new King's Road rituals still betray a kind of uneasiness.
Can you do it again without her damaging the lady? Alright, Disgusting. You've got a black underwear on it. <laughs> Give the man a banana. He's got the Neko's He's got a white. <laughs> Get off of my mother's grave! Get off! <laughs> One of the most cherished posing posts in the King's Road is outside the shop called Boy. Because this is where camera wielders from the great outside world will sometimes press coins of the realm into the palms of those natives willing to take up photogenic postures in their hand-wrought finery. Language, please. Yes. Thank you. Right, can I have some colour film, please? You never got it. <laughs> Are you making much money getting the picture taken? No! Yeah, people just run past No, thank you. Hello. No, thanks. You're blocking the street with your filming, all right? So, we'll go inside. You'll go inside, all right? You got the fever. You're gonna crash. You're talking business. Talking trash, you got the answers, you work it out. We'll change the world, we'll turn it round. Inside Boy, they're still holding out for the pre romantic trade. No flounces or frills here. Oh, look at what you're doing. Look what you're doing. Don't want to eat, don't want to cheat, don't want to lose, don't want to lose, don't want to dance, don't want to romance. No one romance, no one romance. I was on the dome with over a million. You know, it takes its toll. It's sink or swim, man. Frustration, you take for The only concession here to self ornament being the changing faces of t shirt heroes. Don't make sound, don't make, don't make, don't make a sound. Poser's paradise is located here. Through the doors of the great gear market, pretty people are in search of more prettiness, be it wearables or sounds. But this is also the haunt of the musicians who bring us the songs of the new romantics. Such bands as Ultravox, Spandau Ballet, Landscape and Shock. A regular customer is record producer Richard Burgess. I produced Spandau Ballet and I also produced a, a single called Angel Fest for the group Shock. Um, Basically, in my, in my productions and in landscapes music, I, I'm trying to make music that is dance music, that's enjoyable to go out to, to have a good time to, that is indigenous to, to England and to Europe, because previously, all of our dance music's come from America, and I love American music, but it's right that we should produce music of our own, it's right that we should produce clothes of our own, it's right that we should produce looks of our own, and that, basically is what I'm trying to say through my music and I think that that is what this is all about really it's what the King's Road is all about it's about having some originality some innovation and, and manifesting your own individuality through the way you look and the way you the, you know through everything you do through your music through whatever you do the original Bauhaus movement has as its slogan less means more Here in the great gear market, excess means most. From clothes to cosmetics, it's a way with fashion houses and galleries because this is where you can become your own art object.
market has two centers for hanging out and exchanging information. One is the coffee bar, where purchases are compared, hairstyles are admired, and as ever, mutual photography takes place. But it's here, to Rusty's record cage, that every Bowie look-alike must come to ask Saturday's most important question, where's it at tonight? Because although nightclubbing is central to the poser's games plan, its special feature is that the place to snap and be snapped changes week by week. Its location may be passed on only by word of mouth. So as evening grows, the glam rock gets louder and the questions more eager. Tonight it's planets in Piccadilly's Burlington Arcade. As with all poser nightclubbing venues, admission is by exquisite appearance only. Because every object of artistic beauty requires careful maintenance, the powder room gets as crowded as the dance floor. Here again, lips and faces are renewed while outside the music continues to beat and the cosmetic industry to rejoice. <laughs> When the fellas leave the floor, it's a different picture, but not very different. <laughs> More emphasis seems to be placed on the eyes, more in the way of friendly advice. Do you have a pen? Uh, I like it. That's a bit of blood. Hands get some People just want to dress up, don't they? Same as I want to dress up, same as he wants. It's just something to do, isn't People it? People dress up because they think they look nice, like the way they dress up. You know, that's why they do it. I mean, it's a personal thing, and that's why people dress up, because they like the way they look, obviously. People don't spend hours in front of the mirror getting ready to look awful. Look they dress up because they look nice. Well, a lot of them look individual. I mean, all right, so it starts to look like a uniform after a while, some of it. But compared to what people wear in the streets, it's sort of different. So it's just nice to be able to go somewhere and do something different. Different is also a question of feeling alien. In this world of personal glamour, even a robot has a role to play. Charge your time to a credit card. That's for your life. Spend your life on a leisure farm. There's 
no more work, only play. My cool brain is here to stay. Information processors are moving in. The word is out, digiting. Play time for the euro. So, as long as the camera can point its lens your way, it's everyone to his own pose. While there's a group of Kings Road kids prepared to devote what little money they have to filling a dance floor with frill fops and Greek gods and part-time pirates, then perhaps posing inhabitants of a hard-hit city can lay some claim to that new romantic word, hope. European man, man, man. 